Cup of TV. My name is So Ye, and welcome to Cup of TV. and welcome to Cuppa TV. On today's show, I'm joined by the band Levon, who are here today on my sofa in Nashville, Tennessee. So guys, hello and welcome to Cuppa TV. Thank you so much for having yeah. us, Wonderful Monica. to have you here. So we've got, introduce yourselves to our UK viewers. <laughs> I'm Michael, and I uh, sing and play guitar in this very band here, Levon. I'm Ryan, I play guitar and sing backup vocals and do mandolin. Wonderful. I'm Jake, I usually play bass and percussion and I sing as well. Fantastic. So guys, it's just wonderful you can be here. And I mean, we've, we've, we've I've just heard we've, we had a sneaky preview just before we came on air of your band. But tell me a little bit about you as a band. How did you all get together? Well, we, uh, we all live in Nashville now, but we're from all over the place. Jake and I originally met about a year and a half ago. And we were playing the same, the same venue to the, together in two different bands and really liked what each other heard and started jamming together. And then the rest is, is history. So... <laughs> That was a bit awkward. You didn't leave the band there and then, did you? Did you think the band? Not that were, day. No, not that day. Yes. <laughs> the, the next day. The next yeah. day. Yeah, 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 I waited, right. waited 24 hours. Yeah. Absolutely. And so. then Ryan, we found um, about two months ago, mm. and we've been playing shows together, touring, and it's just been a blast. Wonderful. So, it, now you're actually formed together, do you mm -hmm. feel that this is the band? Are you really, t I mean, you sound really tight, and we, we're going to hear you in a minute, but, you Thank know, you. do you feel that this is the band for you? Are you all feeling that? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I have to say. Yeah? How do you feel? Oh, I'm excited about it. I'm yeah. really enjoying playing with the guys. I'm still, like, the new guy yeah. in the band, but I'm, I'm really enjoying <laughs> He's it. He's earning his way, right? He's earning yeah. his way, that's it. So, what about musically? Did you, any of you study music at school? Did you study music at all? I did. I grew up in a really musical family, so I just had three sisters harmonizing all the time and a brother that learned any instrument he wanted to, so. I mean, you are, Nashville is the musical capital of the world. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, you know, we've interviewed many singer-songwriters when we've been here. And it's just incredible how, um, you know, just the unity when, when bands come together or any artists come together, you all seem to help each other. And you know, and do you find that yourself, Michael? It's a it's a family vibe that yeah. we have going on. We spend a lot of time together. So if you don't have that honesty and that respect for one another, things really aren't going to work out mm -hmm. in the long run. So I think what's kept us being really productive is just having the open door policy of being really out in the open about how you're feeling, about where it's going creatively, and mm -hmm. and in a live aspect, a recording aspect. There's a lot of different places that you really have to be be really tight as friends in order to create well. So I think yeah. it's been a good learning experience for all of us. Yeah, for sure. Is that, do you feel the same? Absolutely. Like, I mean, yeah. that easy connection is something I didn't have in previous bands, and that's why I immediately said, this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. this is the, you're in the right band, which is a very good job. <laughs> so how did, <laughs> how did you get the name? How did Levon come about? How did you get that name? Oh, well, big fans of uh, Levon Helm mm -hmm. from the band, uh, and for sure the 70s sound with all the harmonies from then, really trying to reach back into that time. And uh, you kind of had a connection to that Elton John song too, didn't you? Yeah, my dad used to sing, Levon, Levon likes his money in the shower all the time. <laughs> and uh, from a very early age, I was a big fan of Elton John as well. And we want the name to be reminiscent of, of kicking it back old, in the old school days and really bringing the music back to a natural more organic yeah. place. So. so how would you describe your music? And how, what sort of genre of music would you put yourself in? Um, we want to be categorized as, as a timeless band. We want our mm -hmm. music to be relevant in whatever decade it's listened to from now on. And uh, one of our favorite bands is the Eagles, and I think they did a really good job of um, kind of going over multiple genres mm -hmm. and keeping things really really all about the melody and the lyrics and it's quite difficult sometimes is it particularly for bands because they do like to put you the music industry does like to put you in one particular genre and when you're sure. kind of doing a little bit of everything really that's quite mm. difficult especially because you write you all write don't you you all write together so Correct. everything you've written i mean the two so songs you're going to perform today did you all write did you all write those together um we we've haven't written those ones all together 
we wrote them right before Ryan got yeah. in the in the band, but a lot of them we do, and uh, I think it adds to the to the relevance. I was going to say, is that important to you that you Absolutely. write your own music? How about you, Ron? You're going to be writing some music with? I'm I'm course. hoping so yeah. very soon. Yeah. yeah, I'm looking forward to writing with everybody. And what about your 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 career before here? Did, was your musical family, or how did you? My get my entire family is incredibly musical. Oh. Uh, my granddad is a a banjo player and a guitar player, oh. and my my dad is a great singer, guitar player, everything. So I, really both sides of my family is very musical. So I got kind of sandwiched in I was going to say, <laughs> never right. chance of being a doctor then, a lawyer. Right. 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 Not, a not a chance. Oh, no. and are you happy with that though? Oh, very, yeah. yeah. I can't think of anything else I'd rather mm. be doing. And how about so. for you, Mike, with musical background? Yes. As far as um, is concerned, you're well, saying your dad sings in the shower? Yes. <laughs> Amazing voice, you would never yeah. admit it. But um, I had two older sisters that were always getting me into new new albums and mm -hmm. stuff. It was really helpful having two older sisters to learn to sing. And then my mother was a piano teacher and she couldn't get me to sit on the bench very long because I wanted to go throw the football. But yeah. <laughs> I eventually picked up guitar and been singing for a very long time. Wonderful. Well, let's yeah. hear something now. So what are you going to play Absolutely. for us? This song, Monica, is called Why Oh Why. It's the very first song that we wrote as a band. And, Fantastic. Um, and we're going to play it for you. Wonderful. Cool. Thank so, you. When did you write that one? Um, about 
maybe a, almost a year a while ago yeah a year ago wonderful and mm -hmm. again how, when you start writing how do you how do you start writing do you just well fed and <laughs> it's very important. one cup of coffee yeah, one cup of tea and and be around your best friends and be in a good mood and ready to ready to see what happens yeah absolutely and is it silly question but i'm often asked this for people that write music is it a night you find your best inspiration do you wake up in the middle of the night and scribble things down or it's... i don't think it's ever the same no it's just whatever it's how, what... does it, how does it work for you just Joe? i mean some days some five days in a row i get inspiration any different times of the day and sometimes i don't get something for a week but it's always different every time and when you're playing you know when you're doing your gigs um what do what do you find that obviously you're building up your fan base mm -hmm. what do your fans respond to the most what sort of songs do they like um they really responding to um one of our songs called marianne that's on youtube there's a little music video for it and it's a song about having a crush on a older woman <laughs> and um we go through the different categories of of the hotter older women there's yeah cougar. this introduction we give before we play it every time um anyways so that's good it's a it's an interactive <laughs> piece and um it's very I, memorable i think the really the overall intimacy of a good amount of our songs because we do we play it stripped down like this yeah where we go and we incorporate a little loop pedal um, we build some beatbox beatbox loops, mm -hmm. and um, but, but this really, is mostly it's, how you play. Yeah, and is this how you do? You think you'll keep you'll keep it like this? Do you just think this is how you'll continue to play? Absolutely, yeah. especially for a radio tour. It's good that we're leaning and yes, mean, just the three of us. So. Yes, absolutely, fitting nicely on the sofa as well. So, it's <laughs> <laughs> so what's the future, guys, for the band? What would you like to do? Are you coming to the UK? Absolutely. Wonderful, when the wonderful. time when the time is right here in a couple yeah. months, we'll be able to do that. Yeah. Wonderful. And you've just been signed, haven't you? By yeah, Records. pretty Was recently. It, yeah. How? What, what? Tell us about that, Jake. Uh, it's Sony Nashville. Yeah. I'm. Well, and Epic Records in New York. I guess we're starting in Nashville and real pumped about Sorry that it kind of all happened at once yeah yeah i mean how do you feel about that ryan because i mean you're also newly formed but you're, you're the new member of the band i am so. the, it, they're they're working me yeah it, <laughs> every day it's something new yeah. so uh, it's all been work. really fun though yeah, yeah. It's a, and so what would what would you be if if you say to yourself where would i like to be in say a year's time where would you like to be as far as the band's concerned definitely over in the uk quite right <laughs> absolutely yeah. um and I would have to say we want to stay ourselves. I think when you get involved in the industry and and um, and people mm. normally giving you a record deal would want to change a bunch of things and that's what we're so excited about is um, Sony Nashville and Epic. They signed us based upon what they've seen and just what you want and now. They, they told us, you know, we don't want to change it. We just want to help you get to the next stage. So most importantly, I think Connecting with people and staying true to ourselves it brings a lot more relevance to the songs and That's great. And I think we just we're all so lucky to just mm. be doing music as a full-time job that it just doesn't get any better We just we just want to get better ourselves and then be able to connect with as many people as That's possible That's great. Now are you going to play us another song now? Yeah. So what's this one called? This one is a kind of drunk summer love song. It's called, <laughs> it's called Shame and okay. it's about um kind of playing hooky from work so you can maybe go to the lake with your girlfriend and okay. see her right. with her friends. So okay, off it's a, you go. It's a brand new one. We Good. haven't done this one live. Oh, exclusive um, to Cup of TV. We love right. exclusives. We're, we're taking it out for Cup of TV. So. Wonderful, off you go. Let's have some fun with this one. Thank you. 
Cause I'm about to lose another job. Show. Thank you for and having us. We look us. forward to seeing you in the UK. Yeah, absolutely. Brilliant. Thank okay, you, stay with you. us. We're going to take a quick break. We'll come back and join us. You know, th there's been songs that on this album that people have been hearing over the years, yeah. but you know, it's a funny thing when I released the album, it was only a few weeks ago or something like that, um, or months ago now. Yeah, September, um, I think. That's it was, right, yeah. Yes. I mean, you know, better than I do. <laughs> like, um, but I think people, you know, I've kept people that are fans of me and that are supporting me waiting a long time. And when I look back on it, I can't believe that I've been waiting that long. But to me, it wasn't waiting. To me, I was experiencing so much my life completely changed years can pass by where mm. you don't even realize how long it's been and to me i've been uh you know on this journey of of my personal life changing and also you know soaking in all the music i've heard and i've been making music and performing all this time but i hadn't actually made an album so some of the things i did have been crazy like you know skrillex working with skrillex or touring with people like uh, Casey Musgraves or Tom Jones, like you say, and doing these things. And um, yet it just took me a while to do this album because I think there was a great sense of fear and all of, of you know, well... Did it I, just feel like the right time, Lucy? Was this the did. right time? I mean, that's it important did. though, isn't it, for an mm. artist? You've got to feel that it's the right time for you yeah. to do something. So obviously that was the right time for you. Yeah, definitely. And I think, I think I just was in my head too much before. I was, you know, writing music every day, all the time, some for other artists, some for myself. And I think I was just like, right, you know, it's time to get in the studio and do it. But, you know, part of it was, you know, I had to figure out how I was going to make this album. It's, I was not with the record company anymore, mm. all, all independent. And I think I'd let that stop me before. So mm. I think I really uh, came sort of full circle, as you do in life sometimes, where you go on this huge journey and then you come back to the beginning as, why do I want to do this? Why is it important that I put a record out? Is it because of recognition? Is it so that I can have fame? Is it so that I can be relevant or anything like that? And I realized actually that I was just dying to sing. I was dying to sing these songs, say these things. And I was like, I don't really care what I've got or what I haven't got. I want to put this album out and just put it out. It's very cathartic for me to do so. And also, it's just, it's what it's about. It's like, you love music, do it and put it out there. It shouldn't be about anything else. So what's so. it called? Tell us what it's called. It's called Let Us To Ghost. Let Us To Ghost. Um, this is a song that's been around for a while. Uh, Let Us To Ghost, uh, the song is actually something I wrote four or five years ago. And I just 
hadn't released it on an album so I always knew I wanted that to be the title track of the album and the theory behind it is that every song is a uh, looking back at the past and what's been going on for the past mm -hmm. uh, however many years and uh, every song is a letter either to myself to the past or to the people that have come in and out of my life. So. And you've done a video trilogy haven't you? Yes. To sort of accompany so you've got Letters to Ghosts. Letters to Ghosts. Then, then you've got Villain mm -hmm. and then there's another one coming soon. There's another one coming which is a third installment which is for a song called Smoke and actually with this album there's I'm not really following you know a lot of artists have to have this sort of, uh, strategic route that they go and this video comes then this single comes I just wanted to be creative and say I'm just going to do videos for the songs that I love on this video and we're also going to be doing a video for How to Lose It All which is another track I love but but this trilogy is a three part story so first comes Letters to Ghost then comes Villain then S Smoke you see how the story unfolds and where it goes next with this character that I play in both videos being yes. a little bit of the bad character and yeah. um, getting ourselves <laughs> I did I did it's, it's, yeah. it's sort of I think it's easier for somebody to take on a character I feel yeah. like a lot of artists do that you see how different they are in their daily lives than when they go on stage they take on this persona that I feel I wanted to take on in these videos and it was you know and it's not like you know I'm you know we're claiming to be angels mm -hmm. everyone has experience in their lives where they are either not proud of or they are ashamed to talk about or something like that and I think I wanted to show uh, people that um, with every good there's a bad side and you know no one's perfect and even though I'm not going around kidnapping people and putting them in the trunks of my car mm -hmm. not yet anyway. <laughs> um, I, you know there's 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 things that I take blame for and there's things that uh, other people would take blame for and I think that's what all these songs are about saying this is not a, a candy coated way to tell this story this is the real story and I'm just exaggerating being the bad guy what's your favorite instrument this, this one, the guitar. Yeah. You look very comfortable. Thank with it, you. I, to say. I think I, yeah. I, you know, fall asleep yeah. on this so, at yeah. some point. <laughs> Draw. When, and when you're, um, you know, when you're writing your songs, yeah. and I know that, that now you've been doing that for a long time, yes. and it's something that you're always going to love. But you're looking at now, looking more at singing as well, yes. aren't you? Yes. So how did that transition come about? Well, I'd always been saying, no, 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 I don't want to sing. I don't want to sing. And um, I had a few just people that are very close to me and that I respect a lot, mm -hmm. saying, why the heck are you trying to s sell your songs? You should sing your songs. And um, I think as a songwriter, we, we know where the song has come from. We know what, what we want the song to sound like. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's going to be a very new endeavor just yeah. to, to go about that. And I'm, I'm really excited. Because I'm really presumably excited. when you're writing your songs, you, you, for the demo that you send to other artists, you would, you would sing yourself. Well, how I, does it yeah, work? Tell yeah, us how it works. Yeah, uh, well, usually as a songwriter, we write the songs and then have the best possible singer you can come in on it. And I have some amazing artist friends here in Nashville and had uh, gotten them to sing them. And, um, and then, then usually it is then sent off to uh, hopefully Whoever. Carrie Underwood, Mary, yes, so Miranda yes. Lambert, yes, <laughs> proclaimed. <laughs> would you, who, is there anybody that you would really like to see singing your songs. Miranda Lambert. Really? And uh, she's, I think she's just got that sass and that uh, real energy, you know, behind behind it. And to be able to sing the broken downness and yet then sing the house that built me. You know what I mean? So um, I hope to work with her someday. She's amazing. And as a singer, I mean, yes. that's yes. going to be an amazing thing. Now, are you yes. going to be coming over to the UK? Yes, of course. Wonderful. Quite of right. Course. So, I've got to have my look out. <laughs> I've got to have me some tea, some <laughs> real tea. Cup of tea. Cup of, absolutely. There you go. Yes. If you need a cup of English tea, quite right. Absolutely. And you have to teach me how to make it properly. Absolutely. <laughs> I will. <laughs> so when you're coming to England, yes. do, you, do you see, how do you see your future? In the, you know, in the UK and Europe, do you want to do tours all across the UK? What do you see yourself doing? I would love to do that. I would love to just be able to get up there and just give people a great uh, performance as far as just rock out, fun, girl songs, and for the guys to make the guys laugh, and um, then be able to break it down and just sing what really matters, you know? Wonderful. Changing now, lives. Let's see that fiddle. You want see, that? I do. It's yes. been sitting here. And again, who inspired you to do the fiddle, to play the oh, fiddle? Oh, okay. So, um... In Canada, we have some great fiddle. Fiddling is huge up there. You would not think of it. No. And I didn't so realize I, that. I know. And I heard someone do a, a, uh, a bow shuffle. I was hooked. I used to sneak down into uh, 
into the basement while my family was sleeping and practice because these things are loud. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> and so I would sneak down just there. Just about and, to hear. Right? <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. So that's. that's yeah, see, I, did, no, I don't think our viewers would know that Canadians are really into the fiddle. Uh, I, so I know. This is great. So, you know, you were in the championships as well, weren't you? Yes, in 2005, 2005. the Canadian uh, Fiddle Championships. And how, so. did you do, how did you fare in those championships? You know, I didn't make the finals, uh, but it was such an amazing experience. Did that kind of inspire you to do more with the fiddle as well? No, I think it's one of those instruments that you just play and enjoy playing. Wonderful. And uh, okay, it, uh, let's, let's yeah, hear you play. Absolutely. What are you going to play for us? I'm going to uh, play Maple Sugar. Okay. It's a Canadian fiddle tune. Wonderful. Yes. Off you go. Okay. Canadian friends who watch Cup of TV, oh, so they I are going to love that. They will probably know that too. Yeah, then. exactly. I mean, that's a that's you play that so well. Oh, thank you. So again, when you're starting your yeah. new venture as a yes. singer, you're going to be doing this, playing the fiddle, playing the guitar, playing the piano. Yes. Do you see that's how your future is, Beth? Yep. What is it you would like to give to music? Obviously, you're very passionate about what you do, but as I a am. singer now, yes, yeah. What would you like to, you know, to give back to the music? I would love to be that singer, that song in the car when someone's going through a hard time. You know, they always have the radio on. This is what I've always said, you know. And just to be that voice, they might, you know, have had where their parents or anything might not have been able to reach them. Maybe this song is and be able to direct a life a different way and a better way. That's it. been more for sure mm. more and I don't think I thought about it enough when I left home although I've been um, planning it for a year I was planning doing the trip but I just didn't really realize how big it really was going to be and at times I feel like I've bitten off a little bit more than I can chew but when it's been good it's been just a dream like yesterday was a dream day everything was brilliant mm. the sun was shining we had a great tailgate I got in for nothing with the ticket with my friends. One, another guy called Greg, one of Barry's friends mm -hmm. and uh, part of our team of people. I sat with him. It was a nice game. It really was. It's a beautiful, easy, relaxing day. And I've had a few of those, but I've also had some instances where I've had long overnight bus rides and I've been stuck in the middle of nowhere in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. But that's all a part of it. I will look back on that at the end and think, that was funny. Yeah. I remember we were stuck in the middle of the night in Cleveland, Ohio. All part of your experience. It is, really. it is. Have you got a highlight of your trip so far? Um, oh gosh, you've put me on the spot now. I think they'll probably change every day mm. because I've got lots of funny stories. What's your stories. highlight so far this week? Highlight this week. Um, what have you done this week that you thought, oh, that's just been amazing? I go to the Honky Tonks, the bars, and there's some brilliant bands here. The talent here in Nashville is second to none. And I've seen some really great performers and just being around music as a songwriter yeah, as myself. I was going to say, you're a songwriter as well, Dennis, aren't you? So that's something that's quite passionate, yeah. that you're very passionate about. So yeah. have you found that coming here to Nashville, that's kind of rekindled that passion? Yeah, yeah definitely. But the thing is as well, the, the talent here is so high. Mm. You can be a little bit intimidated. I go in these honky-tonks and you watch these people and you just think, 
could I follow them after that? Because they're <laughs> so, so high mm, standard. Mm, it is. So, it's very high standard here. In fact, there's so many people here. I don't... It, it, I mean, it's an incredible wash of talent. It's just amazing. I, I wouldn't like to be that person that mm. has to pick that one person if you're just looking for a particular sound yeah. because they're all incredible, aren't yeah. they? And I don't know how they find new talent here because what makes that man better than that man or that girl mm. better? Because they're all super talented. Mm. How do they get chosen? I just don't know. That's an incredible <laughs> venue, but we'll talk about that. So, okay, last time I saw you, you were you were do, you were you were incredibly busy. You were doing your tour. You had your single, Skipping Stone. You were just tell us about it. What's been happening? Well, I had a wonderful time yeah. touring in the UK, and I met all kinds of great people. And I'll introduce you to uh, a friend yes. I kidnapped and brought yes, here with me. Yes, we're going to see some of those people <laughs> just after the break. Yeah. Yes, and uh, and so I released Skipping Stones. It's in uh, it's. In all the universities across the UK on video screens right now, the video. Wow. And I just found out that uh, I made the Grammys nominations consideration list. Oh. So it's the oh. preliminary round, and now people vote on on if it makes the final yeah. ballot. So if you guys are uh, Neris yes. members, please you know consider me. Oh. Okay, yeah, that's incredible. Well done, and it's Thank going to be you. on the, all the universities in the in our universities in yes, the UK. Yes, in the UK, hundred universities Fantastic. on seven hundred screens. I'm very Wonderful. excited. Now you performed that track in the studio. I did. I remember at the time, everybody just loved it. So, oh, is that one of your favourite songs? It is. It reminds me of my childhood. You know, I, I grew up skipping stones across yeah. the rivers yeah. in Alaska. And, uh, and now I've taught my daughter how to do it, and she's, she's better at it than I am now. So, <laughs> yeah, and, uh, but yeah, it, it means a lot to me. It's, it's basically a tribute to my hometown and all the people in it, and I, I have fun singing it. Yeah. So. <laughs> exactly. so, after your tour of the UK, where, where did you go? You went to London, didn't you, when you were in the UK? Obviously yes. You came to Birmingham for yes. us. Uh -huh. Where else did you go? Did you well, go it was London-based, yeah. so I basically do gigs uh, all over, but I was centrally located in London, so I could just take the trains. Fantastic. Yeah. And did you have a good time? I had a great time. And I wanted to say hi to Ed Kuna, who lives in, uh, he's from Birmingham. Oh, he lives hello, in Ed Kuna. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He'd be watching this on the show. He was the guitar player who played with oh, me on your show fantastic. last time. Oh, yes, that's right. He's yes. absolutely lovely. He's family now, and I just wanted to send hugs and kisses to him and his family. Oh, that's yeah. very good. Well, I'm sure he'll appreciate that. But, Kelly, now tell us what you've been doing here in Nashville. Because we're I, in your wonderful oh, hometown. Yes. It is the music capital of the it world. It is, isn't it? I mean, you just don't hear bad music anywhere no, you go. Everyone incredible. is so talented. I had a guy painting my house, and he ended up being a, a brilliant singer-songwriter. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's good. I've come to the conclusion yeah. that everyone's just secretly a singer-songwriter here. It's true. In LA, all it's all jobs. actors, yes. you know, waiting tables and stuff. Here, it's all musicians doing yeah. odd jobs to survive. But I mean, we've interviewed other musical artists since we've been here, and I mean, there's a, there's just this incredible. I keep saying it, but there's this incredible sense of. Uh, just this belonging here in Nashville. It is. And, and you yeah, are very community uh, oriented. Yes. I mean, you're yeah. a very well established, well known artist here in Nashville and internationally, Kelly. Is it something important for you to keep your roots here? You know, I, I absolutely love Nashville, but, you know, and I love California and I love Alaska where I'm from. I, I, um, I'm a gypsy, so home is where I hang my hat. Yes. But uh, I do find that Nashville, it, it's, I feel I was immediately embraced. For your eyes, they are young, they are young, and stay your mind. If you lose yours, trying to understand mine, and hold your tongue. For your eyes, they are young, they are young, and stay your mind. Yeah, yeah. 
And it's interesting because vinyl, for instance, vinyl's making a comeback and, you know, there's a lot more vinyls now on sale in the UK. Um, is it like that in, in the US or, or has it never gone away in the US? Have no, it's, it, it's, it's definitely resurging in the mm. US and I, I think that that really goes to the idea that music lovers really want more of a richer experience than what a file can give them. And uh, one of the things that really hurts our industry that would be so easy to fix is when you're just listening on, a, on an iPhone to a file or to a stream, which I do all the time, there's no richness to the experience. I, I can't hit my screen and see who produced that record, who played on that record. I want to be able to read the lyrics. Just like in the days, and, and I know you're too young to remember the vinyl days, but when you sit, slid out the sleeve and you opened up the big album and there was lyrics and there was art, there's a very immersive experience I've got there. those, that's fine. <laughs> You've heard of yes, them. You've heard people talk about those. it. But it is, but it is, as you say, it is a wonderful thing. If you're into music, then I would say all musicians, there's nothing like holding a vinyl and the, the, the sound that it makes yeah. when you actually oh. play a vinyl. Yeah. Uh, but interestingly, when you go to children, for instance, your Belmont University, when the kids that come here, mm -hmm. are they aware of that? Have, have they ever seen vinyl before they, have they, oh, they absolutely. come to you? Oh, so, absolutely. You know, do you have and, that? and I would almost argue that any student at Belmont would probably know more about current mm -hmm. vinyl than me, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, because they're they're out there. They're, yes. Again, it's a it's a university that's half full of music people, yes. so they love music mm -hmm. and and they they're mm -hmm. definitely going to look for that richer yeah. experience. Yeah. But that's really to me that underscores sort of the yes. whole point is the richness of the experience. It's mm -hmm. so much bigger than what can be in an MP3 file. What's the future for this wonderful university? Well, uh, you know what what I see anyway is again, I, and I told the, I, I've told everyone when I came back is we all have a window, you know, and my window is to really share uh, and really set it up for really at the next generation. And and what does that mean? There's going to be professors. Uh, I mean, every I mean, this is crazy, but just today, we have a program. We send students out to LA, Belmont West, and we have a Belmont East. And right. someone told me we've got about 25 students, and I think six of them have been signed to writer contracts in LA this semester. Well, I mean, that's the future. You yes. see what I'm saying? Yeah. And and what it is, it's just really encouraging those to come back and do what I did. You know what I'm saying? Keep this thing have going. Have a really a lovely environment like this where they can grow, really. And, well, and, and, and again, give back because yes. I, I think that's what it's about. And I will share something again. I've been on the advisory board of the Curb School for 20 years. And in and, and that process, it's really how I, it made it not easy, but it made it a comfortable uh step back to come be the dean and on the advisory board we tend to have people you know looking like me that have been in the business that have run a company and all that but one of the first things i did was recognize that we have young graduates starting to change the world in fact google when they came to town the first company i believe it's made in that was an approved google company is uh, was founded by a belmont grad who's only been out for three years and so I've asked him to come back and be on the advisory yes. board. You see what I'm saying? Yes, yeah, so I it's think, again, it's, you, they've gone out, but they come well, back. Well, and generationally, I don't have to wait for some guy to have 20 years. I mean, the world has changed so much that it's important that even someone who, and I like it because they are, they literally have a recent memory of what it's like here and what do we need to do to make it better. That would be great. Now, Birmingham have a jazz festival, so yes. you're hoping to, to showcase there, aren't yes. you? Yes, so and the, the A&R company I'm working with, mm. are, you know, we're going to be working with that. So Fantastic. it's going to be amazing to get up there yeah. and, and to uh, just to be back again. And where was the last time you were in the UK? Oh, late 90s. Wow. Yeah, yeah. so it's been a while. Yeah. But all my friends, that's the wonderful thing about Facebook and, yeah. and email. I, I'm, yeah, I'm social media. You can still keep in touch with people, can't Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Say. And how do you see your future, Stephanie? What would you like to do? I want to perform, I want to write, I want to record, I want to continue to create, and um, the, the, um, I call myself the Siren of the South, mm -hmm. because I really want to bring that into the picture. So it, it's not so much just the music, but it's, again, it's the culture, it's the literature, it's, it's the, um, the history, 
trying to bring all that into this package. So that way when people listen to it, not only with, with the bootlegger, if someone gets interested in, oh, well, well, that's an interesting story. Well, what's the history of that? Because I'm also an educator, so you know that, that's kind of my day job. I'm a, I'm a voice teacher and I'm a university professor. So it's, it's one of those things to really bring education into what you're doing. Because I feel like you know you have a platform, you should teach something as well as as just you know bringing something. Almost give forefront. back. Yeah, yeah. Do, you, do you enjoy that? Do you I enjoy love that. Voice? I love it very much. Yeah. You know, and, and just being able to share what I like with other people, and then when people gravitate towards that, or then they teach me something I didn't know, then we get all excited about it. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's a wonderful thing listening to you. Obviously, you've got the passion. Thank you. you. Know, it's great. Is there any one particular place in the world that you'd love to perform? New Orleans. Really? Yes, yeah. I really want to go yeah. to New Orleans. Harry Connick Jr. is one of my absolute favorite mm. performers. Yeah. Uh, he's singers. a great singer, oh, actor. Oh, my gosh, absolutely. Very everything. talented man. Yes. Mm. And, you know, he's one that's really brought, you know, the jazz genre yes. back to life. Yeah. I think it was the first time I heard him was the When Harry Met Sally yes. soundtrack. Mm. And all of those that. songs were really starting to come back yeah. again. And I credit him for that um, because it was kind of a lull there you know it really wasn't happening do you feel that jazz is making it sort of come back because I mean we've got we've got very brilliant clubs in yes. the UK of course Ronnie Scott's yes Springs oh my gosh that's another um, venue you know, I that's, love that's a, a great venue for jazz I mean, is there is there places like that all over the world probably that you'd lo like yes. to perform at oh my gosh well again the history of just being there you know Birdland in New York and and, and different places yeah. like that and, and Ronnie Scott's it's so funny yeah. when I was a student and I'd always walk by you kind of just go and you look inside oh. and you see what's happening but I never went and in one day you want to perform <laughs> right now oh, 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 and um, what's the, what's some personal favourite of yours that you've had here? That's a musical artist that you've had here. Is there, is there uh, a favourite? I probably do have my favourite. You know, I've got a local, the local artists. I've, I've got several local artists that I love, and we keep bringing back. You know, Stephanie's yeah. my best. First jazz, she's yeah. you know, one of the best. Yeah, so. So they call her the siren of the south. Don't yeah, they, they do. Yes, yeah, that's it. She's a great person. And again, it's um, again that's a different genre of music here because you're yeah, so used to thinking, you know, back home the viewers might think it's just all country. Oh, no. But again, as you've just said, and many of the other guests that we've had have said, it's totally you know different. Yeah, we do. Jazz music. is probably 25 percent of it, and then the Americana, which encompasses a lot of the different, yeah. you know, hillbilly. To, uh, Bluegrass mm -hmm. to folk. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like the folk art or the yeah. artists that are more of the folky, just raspy kind of. Yeah. It's and how do you see the music industry, Michael? Because obviously you're into music. You've got this wonderful place here in Franklin. Have you seen a change? What, uh, how do you see it in the future? I think. I think there's a lot coming in to record and bring what they have and try to take their shot at Nashville and see, but it's not always country, it's always something different. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of the movements came, come from out west to Nashville because of just what we have, the hospitality that we offer in the south. And yes. I think that's a key part of it, keeping real. Keeping that roots. Do you think as, it, as you know things grow and you know more people come in and things change and things evolve? Of course they do naturally. Do you think that's always going to be something? You know the southern hospitality, oh, the family. The friend, do you think that's always in your roots and that will remain? It will. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, that's great. And tell us about tell us about any exciting projects that you're going to be doing or any anything that you're going to be doing in the future or between now and Christmas. Have you got anything coming up you want oh. to share with us? <laughs> running a restaurant uh, yes. it's, like a, it's like a child <laughs> yes, it's a, uh, yeah. we're adding a couple more bars to our first floor mm -hmm. and a bar on our stage so it's uh, other than that we're doing always looking for the next music venue yes this is more of a restaurant with a music venue yeah I'd like to do a music venue and then the restaurant oh yes so yes. it's it the main core is the music yeah and which we Weekends, are we the music yeah. is the main emphasis at Gray's. Are you musical yourself? Uh, I, not, not currently. No. It's been a while. So. Yeah. Do you play a musical instrument at mm. all? Yeah. What do you play? I, it was a little bit, guitar. Guitar. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's it. I don't think there's anybody I haven't met in Nashville that doesn't play a musical <laughs> yeah, we instrument. All play it, yeah. <laughs> we'll play something. So. And the fiddle has been proven very yeah, that's popular true. as well, I never played which, that, which yeah, is great. Should, that's no. an interesting. I, that's a lovely yeah. experience. It's been so fascinating to watch you. Thank you so much, Mike, well, for you. taking time out. Thank you so much. feedback been from the customers you know that come here what do they what do they think about the theater well it's um, it's a very special place it's a very beloved tradition here in Franklin to be able to uh, enjoy the theater 
Uh, but certainly since we've been reopened and, and been doing shows uh, and things, we, we ask our customers all the time, how was your experience, and ask them in a way that gives them the ability to anonymously tell yes, us if they tell didn't us the like truth. it. Yes. Yeah, yes. tell us the truth. Um, and thus far, we've really gotten astounding ratings from people that recommend us to others. I think the last one we saw uh, was like 98%, over 98% of the people just rated things just extraordinary. And what do they like about it? What's the, what's the thing they like about it the most? Well, I, th I think a couple of things. One is um, certainly the talent and whatever we're presenting, the programming that we do yeah. here. Uh, we, we pay very close attention to what they're telling us that they want to see and what they enjoy. Um, so that's easy if you're giving them yes, what you want. Absolutely, yes. Chances of yes. getting uh, yeah. uh, favorable reviews is good. But it is, is important good. though, isn't it, to listen to your customers absolutely. and find out exactly what they want because it might not be necessarily how you saw it going, you know, but it's, you obviously do that very well because as you say, the experience is, is usually very, very good for people. Yeah, and, and the other part I think is that when you're creating a space like the Franklin Theater, you want to um, make a room feel uh, comfortable. Uh, it's a warm environment. It feels like I'm just sitting in a natural place that this is where I really want to be for a show. Uh, and then the fact that it's intimate and you're not just one of 10,000 people watching a show, you're one of 300 people, is that you get to know those people and get to enjoy their company. So uh, it's a relationship between what's happening on stage and the audience. It's a relationship between the audience and other audience members. And for performers on stage, you know, they get to feel what's going on in the audience and that gets reflected back in their performance if they really feel like they're touching people. That's why you perform. That's why you want to do what you do is I want to touch people emotionally. And in a room like this, as intimate as, as it is, you, you really can feel that. Whereas you may not be able to feel that as well in a large stadium show or a much larger venue. So. Uh, we have the production capabilities here to make them look good and sound good on stage, uh, which a lot of smaller theaters don't always have that luxury. Uh, we've been blessed with enough resources to be able to do it well, and uh, they trust us to stage their shows, the performers do.